Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another Deep Space update, now from Amsterdam. Now, obviously continuing my European vacation, but yesterday, July 2nd, was a very big day with lots of cool stuff going on. First, we had the uh, test of the Orion abort system. So the Orion capsule is, of course, going to ride on top of the SLS, and they need to test the in-flight abort. Uh, it's going to use a very similar abort system to that used on Apollo. It uses a solid rocket motor. One of the interesting things, I guess, is the way that instead of having the motors pointing downwards over the top of the capsule, they actually fire the motors up into a diverter plate, sort of. I mean, that's one way to look at it. And then that is diverted down and it pulls off. So yeah, they ran this test. Now, obviously they didn't have an SLS rock booster like sitting around ready because that would take years. So instead they slapped together the first stage of a Minotaur launch vehicle or a Peacekeeper missile. And the thing with that is it's, it's a solid rocket motor and it's not nearly as wide as the SLS upper stage. So they put an aero shell around that to make sure that it's roughly the right size. Uh, yeah, so went through, we saw the thing accelerate up, it's great to see the thing going supersonic, and then the, a, the abort happens, capsule pulls away cleanly, and uh, moments later it fires a divert thruster, and the, um, the aero shell then pulls off, and the capsule is free, free to fall back to the ocean and crash, because they didn't have any parachutes on it. Uh, and of course, they say, well, this was intended which it was, but it was also, I, I was not happy that they just let this poor boilerplate die. You know, back in the Apollo era, they all flew those boilerplates with parachutes because it was very nice to actually have them recovered and put in museums and, you know, get the data on them without collecting them from the thing. But whatever. There's a lot of great photos of this test. A lot of people turned up. It was pretty spectacular the way this thing moved. And it was all in all a great day to see, you know, SLS progressing as much as I've complained about how long it's taking. It's one more step on that way to showing that it can carry crew into space. Uh, obviously, Starliner and Dragon 2, they are using a pusher abort system, which is completely different, but they've had their own problems with that as well. But... In South America, we had a solar eclipse, first solar eclipse in the Earth since 2017 in, uh, you know, on the US. Um, so yeah, lots of great streams about that, building up to the totality. Some amazing promises, uh, prominences were seen in some of the supporting images, but I think my favorite images were the ones taken from space, largely because I couldn't get there, but I could go to the GOES website and, or so the, yeah, and, and basically take a look at the satellite data. So the one I looked at was GOES East, which is a geostationary weather satellite, you know, ridiculously high resolution images. It can make some like 400 megapixel images of the Earth at ridiculous resolutions. It's, it's great. And yeah, the great little video of this. I really was disappointed to find out that Discover has actually gone into safe mode back on the 27th, which is really rather unfortunate. Discover is this cute little satellite that was launched by SpaceX a few years ago. It was the first satellite they launched out of the Earth's sphere of influence. It sits at the L1 point between the Earth and the Sun. And in addition to a bunch of plasma and uh, other instruments that are designed to look at the Sun and look for solar storms, it has a camera on it that points back at Earth and always shows Earth in perfect daylight publishes images every few hours and it was really disappointing that during the solar eclipse it was offline. I'm kind of concerned that we haven't heard anything other than it has gone into safe mode. Um, you know, it'd be nice to know what's going on there so we can get some more details. But yeah, however, in orbit of the moon right now there are a couple of amateur satellites, well, you know, there are a couple of small scale satellites that were launched along with Chang'e 4. And those were be those have managed to take pictures off the eclipse on the surface of the Earth from the Moon, which is pretty special. I think this might actually be the first time we've been able to see an eclipse off the Earth from a body that is eclipsing the body. Does that make sense? Anyway, look, it's really cool that you've got this little satellite out there with this tiny little camera that was able to get this great image. Anyway, I'm just continuing my jaunt around Europe, hoping to get some time to record some real science. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Mm -hmm.